Well, this morning we're going to talk a little bit about keeping the Sabbath holy. It's going to be kind of a short sermon, but uh, no PowerPoint today. But it's something that I think that uh, we, we could probably uh, learn and something that probably we need to refocus. And again, like I said, I'm just going through all of the doctrines this morning. And so this was, this was part of it. <clears throat> There's going to be some scripture here I'm going to read, and um, there's one in particular when I get to it that, at least in my mind, I've always was always applying it outside of the denomination, and you'll see why when we get to it. But really, uh, it applies to us as well. So with that, I'll ask you if you can bow our heads and we'll have another uh, short prayer, please. Dear Heavenly Father, again, we thank you uh, for your goodness and kindness and mercies, and we thank you, Lord God, for all that you do for us and we just ask Lord Jesus now that your Holy Spirit would be with us that our hearts and our minds would be open to you that we could have understanding of your word Lord God and not only that we could be as we read in Revelation not just hearers of the word but help us to be doers of your word as well Lord we ask these blessings to be poured upon us that Jesus may be glorified in all that we do and in all that we are again I thank you and I praise you in Jesus name Amen. Amen. <clears throat> okay. So our first scripture that we're going to look at, and we're going to look at several today, and you're welcome to follow along uh, in your Bibles if you like. I'll be reading out of mine, and I'm reading out of the King James, uh, but you can read um, uh, out of your version as you like. And the first one, we're going to go to the book, <clears throat> to the book of John. Book of John, chapter 14. And you may be, if some of these texts I'm pretty sure you're really familiar with and maybe out of different, uh, in, out of different ways, but this one we're going to just kind of try to connect them all together with, the, uh, with keeping the Sabbath holy. We're going to look at this. <clears throat> and if you like, let's go to uh, the book of John, chapter 14, and we'll start at verse 15. John 14 and 15. And it's really interesting. It says here, if you love me, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> if, you, if you love me, you guys can help me. What does it say? Key come on, mammon. <coughs> so we're gonna, just going to pause at that and look at that. And that's a, 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 uh, at that first phrase right there, right? He says, if, if you love me. And uh, my, in my Bible, I don't know about yours, but in my Bible, my Bible is a, lead, a red letter edition. Uh, so when it's a red letter edition, what does that mean? All right, that's Jesus speaking, right? This is, this is supposed to be a quote from Jesus. And Jesus is saying, <clears throat> okay, thank you so much. <clears throat> yes, this is, um, it's strange here, right? First time it's not as bad, but I just can't never get over these allergies here. Ah, thank you. And so Jesus is saying, what? If you love me. So Jesus is probably talking to the church. He's talking to the disciples. He's talking to everybody. He says, look, if you love me, what, will you, what, what is your response then? What would be your response? He's saying, if you love me, what will you do? You will keep my commandments, right? That's, that's, you know, if we look at that statement, he said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Then, and, and then he goes on to say, and then if you keep my commandments, in result of you loving me and keeping my commandments, then I will pray the Father and he will give you another comforter. He says that he may what? Abide with you forever, right? Not just for a day, not just for a minute, but for all eternity, he says, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. Now, we talked in past sermons, right, that we have to walk in the light. We have to walk in the spirit, right? We have to walk as Jesus Walk. And he says, and if you want to do that, it starts out first by us showing our love to Jesus by keeping his commandments. 
And uh, we're going to get a little bit deeper into this. But when I mention this to other people, because, you know, sometimes, I don't know about you, I know I'm not the only one, but some of you, you guys ever get people knocking on your door trying to tell you about Jesus, right? Trying to show you doctrine. And I, when I talk about this one, th typically they say, well, you know what? He's just talking about two commandments. Love your father, right, with all your heart, all your mind, and then love your neighbor as thyself. I said, no, but wait a minute. He's talking. He specifically says, if you love me, keep my commandments. And so I want to look at this. So we're going to draw on this a little bit. So now let's go. Let's go to the same, uh, same book here, John chapter 15, chapter 15 and verse 10. Which is, some of you might just have to flip the one page over. Chapter 15 and 10. And it says, If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love. Again, you know, and that's a common phrase. We're going to look at this. A common phrase or a common, a common denominator here for keeping God's commandment is what? Love. Amen. Love. He says, the first verse we read, it says, If you love me, then keep my commandments. Now he's saying that if you keep my commandments, then you will abide in my love. Right? So, you know, uh, I'm doing a, a Daniel seminar over here uh, with some senior citizens. And you know what? The very beginning of this, we've done lesson six, I think, no, five. So about a little over a month now. Uh, we've done lesson five. And you know, that's, that's the common theme there with Daniel as well, right? It was love. And then love allows us, if we have love for God, it allows us then what? To be obedient to him, right? To be obedient. And it's all about what? Obedience and worship, right? If we want to truly worship God, we have to love him first of all. Then we can be obedient. But he says then, if you keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandment and abide in his love. Right? So Jesus is saying, look, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you the reality of this relationship. I have abided in the commandments of my Father because I love him and he loves me. And so we were able to be one with one another. If you want to be one with me, if you want to show your love towards me, then you have to be willing to keep my commandments. And so Christ is showing this and he's saying, hey, you know, this, 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 this thing that's, that's that for us to get along, for us to be is a two-way street right he says i love you and we know all that right because god said god is for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son right whosoever believes it's, like, it's love it's already here he says but if you want to show that you love me if you want to reciprocate that love then you do so by keeping my commandments now let's go to the book of first john uh chapter two verse first john chapter two First John chapter 2 and verses 3 and 4. Now this, this is the one I said when I, when I read this at first, you know, years back, I've always tried to apply this outside of our church, but I think it applies to us as well. First John chapter 2 and then verses 3 and 4. And it says here, is it really says, and hereby we do know that we know him, right? So he's saying if we, if we say that we know Jesus, this is what he's talking about. He says, it says, 
And hereby do we know that we know him if what? If we keep his command. Now, you know, if we know Jesus, he's saying here, and here's Peter, uh, I mean John, John the Beloved, he's saying that if we say we know Jesus, if we claim to know Jesus, then we will keep his commandments. And then he goes on in verse 4, he says, because he that saith that I know him, so if we say we know Jesus and keep not his commandments, what then? Is a liar and the truth is not in him. Now those are pretty strong words, aren't they? That's pretty, pretty straightforward. And so, you know, in my mind, in my heart, I thought, well, you know, I always put that out there because of the fourth commandment. We say, hey, you know, if you're not keeping the fourth commandment, if you, don't, if you claim to be know Jesus and then you don't uh, keep his commandments, then, it, then the scripture clearly says that then we are a liar and the truth is not in him, in that person. But I want to take that a little bit step forward. I'm saying, you know what, this comes home to us as well. Because if we say that we know Jesus, then we need to do what? Keep the commandments. If we say we love Jesus, then we have to do what? Keep the commandments. Amen. But I'm going to say is then we have to look. We're going to keep looking at the scriptures to say, but are we truly keeping all of the commandments? And then we, you know, seven-day Adventists are in particular set apart from everybody else, not just with the Sabbath, but that's the most obvious one. You know, we have other things, you know, state of the dead, health, and all these other issues. But the more obvious one out there is the fourth commandment right keeping the sabbath holy and so we're going to look at that so now we're going to jump so we're looking now we're looking at this is the new this is the new testament right this is the new testament so here's peter writing several years as a matter of fact this book of i mean uh, john rather the first john and even the epistle of john the gospel of john was written several years 30 plus years after the resurrection of jesus after the resurrection of Jesus, and, her stays, and he's still saying that, hey, if you love me, keep my commandments. He was rem remembering that, writing that. And then here he's saying that, you know, if we know him, or at least we say we know him, and we don't keep his commandments, then we're liars and the truth is not in us. So now we're going to go back to the Old Testament. And this is where, this is where I'm going to see, because a lot of people don't realize that when Jesus was speaking, especially... Uh, back in John, when we talked about in John in chapter 14, uh, he says that, you know, if you love me, keep my commandments. He was quoting from the Old Testament. A lot of people don't know that, you know, what, when he says that, and that's why some of these churches are saying, well, no, it's just that, you know, the two great commandments is what hinges on. You don't, you don't have to worry about all of the Ten Commandments. But Jesus was quoting from the Old Testament. And we're going to look at this. We're going to look at a couple, uh, several texts and the first one is going to be in Deuteronomy. Now, if we go all the way back to Deuteronomy chapter 5. Deuteronomy chapter 5. Deuteronomy chapter 5 and verse, verse 10. And I didn't mark my Bible. I am just trying to flip through and find them as well to, to give us all a... Um, be on the same thing, right? So Deuteronomy chapter 5, we're going to look at these things. Are we there? Amen? Amen. All right, Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 10. Then he says, and, and Jesus saying, and showing what? He says, showing mercy unto one or two thousands, right? He says, showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me right here's that word again right it's based on love it's not works or anything else but it's based on love he says and i'm showing mercy to thousands of them that love me and do what keep my commandments wow wow you know here it is here's you know and and this is and then he goes on right and this is where i'm going to look at this but if you read all of the rest of this chapter we're not going to look at it now but if you look at this He's kind of here in Deuteronomy. He's, he's really repeating the Ten Commandments again now. So that's what I'm saying. It's not just the, the uh, love your neighbor as yourself because we know the Ten Commandments, the first four are what? The first four commandments show us what? Our love for Jesus, right? Our love for God, right? Don't take his name in vain. Don't make graven images. Don't bow, uh, bow before them, 
right? And they have no other gods but him. And then the other six are then our relationship to one another, right? Our relationship to one another. That's our, our uh, the love your neighbor as yourself. Now let's stay here in, in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 5 and then go to verse 29. Verse 29. And it says here in verse 20, it says this. Oh, that there would be such a heart in them that they would what? Fear me and do what then? Keep all my... You know, and that's an interesting word. And I know this, is, this isn't brand new to this sermon. And I know you've heard this in, in the past. But what does it mean to fear God? What is that word fear? How do we really su- should try to translate that? Yes, Daniel? Respect for him. Amen. What's another word? Give me another word. What's that? reverence amen so respect reverence what's one more i'm looking for one more word if we look at it i know we've seen that it's awe awe to be in awe of god what does it mean to be in awe of something overwhelmed be excited you're just you know we see that in the world today with the uh movie stars and and rock stars and all this right all these people, all these women, they're all in awe of these people. You know what I'm saying? He's saying that, that we're not supposed to be in awe of those people. We're supposed to be in awe of God. We're supposed to show respect and love right to God. We're supposed to be in his presence. And he says, so God here, he says, says, Oh, that there would be such a heart in them, that we would have such a heart in us, that we would be in fear, in awe, in respect and in love of God that we would keep some of his commandments. Oh, okay. All right, just making sure because sometimes we only keep some, right? We don't want to keep them all. Uh, but, but God says we need to keep all of his commandments some of the times. Oh, okay. Always, right? Always that it might be what? well with them and with their children for how long? Forever. Wow. God is amazing. God is awesome, right? He says, look, if you would learn to love me, because these Ten Commandments are what? You guys have heard of this. The Ten Commandments are simply a hedge of safety about us. A hedge of safety to keep us away from Satan, right? To keep us from sin and to keep us in God's holy state that we might what share eternal life with him if we live with him if we love him we're in awe for him so now let's go to the book of Exodus chapter 20 Exodus chapter 20 now we all know Exodus chapter 20 what's in Exodus chapter 20 the Ten Commandments amen amen now we're going to go to verse 6. Amen. Are we there? Amen. Amen. Okay. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 6. And we're, Well, let's look at verse 1. Verse 1, not chapter 20, verse 1. This is, And God spake unto, spake all of these words, saying... I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt and out of the house of bondage. So he's saying, hey, look, I've been merciful and kind to you. I have showed you love, and I've brought you out of slavery. I've brought you out of Egypt. And so now I'm going to give you these Ten Commandments. And he starts right away, right? Thou shalt have no other God before me. So we were saying that this, that he's given us the Ten Commandments. Now let's go to verse 6. Verse 6 right here of those things, he says, he says, and showing mercy unto, th- again, right well, here it is, he says, I'm showing mercy unto thousands, unto thousands of them that do what? That love me. Here he is again, right? This is a love relationship with God, their Savior. He says, look, I brought you out of Egypt. I have showed you miracles. I have done things for you. And you know, we're in that same boat, right? The scripture says, while we were yet enemies, God loved us. While we were yet 
sinners, God loved us, and he brought us out of the land of sin, out of the land of Egypt. He showed miracles in our lives, and he says, I've done all of these things, and so that I will bring mercy unto those, on thousands of them that love me. And the way we show that love is right. He says, because love me, and this is they keep my commandments. Amen. Amen. That's where he's at. That's where he's, he's saying that this is where we need to be. If we want to have, if we sh want to show our love for God, we have to show it by uh, keeping his commandments. Now we're going to get to the crux of the sermon. I really had to set that up, and this is really short. It's time, it's time to go, but this is really short. Now we're going to go to the book of Isaiah, which was supposed to be our scripture reading for this morning. We want to go to the book of Isaiah, chapter 58. Isaiah. Chapter 58. All right. Isaiah 58 and verse 13. The book of Isaiah, chapter 58 and verse 13. there amen amen okay Isaiah 15 verse 13 he says now if thou will turn away thy foot from the Sabbath from what doing thine doing thy pleasure on my holy day and call the Sabbath a delight and holy of the Lord honorable and shall honor him not doing thy own pleasure, nor finding thy own, I mean, not doing thy own ways, nor finding thy own pleasure, nor speaking thy own words. Now this is really interesting because he says here several times, I thought it was kind of interesting, he says in verse 13, from not doing thy own pleasure, and then in verse, uh, then in the next verse, he, re uh, he, he repeats it in that same verse twice, right? Not doing thy own pleasure twice in the same verse. And you could almost say three times because he says, uh, from doing thy own pleasure, right? And then he says, um, by doing your own way, then again he says, my, um, by not finding your own pleasure. Three different times, almost the same thing. Not doing thine own pleasure. Not doing what you like, not, not keeping the Sabbath the way you want, but keep the Sabbath the way I want. And then he says, not speaking your own words, right? Not, and then he says, not doing our own ways, right? Call the Sabbath day a delight. We have to learn to call the Sabbath a delight. We have to be interested. We have to be excited for the Sabbath day. And I, and I said this before in a different sermon, but I want to say it again, that I knew that when I first became a seven-day Adventist, I used to try to make that a mental picture for myself. When the sun went down on the Sabbath, I used to was already thinking in my mind about the next Sabbath. I've always, always wanted to prepare myself spiritually for the next week. I'm not, I wasn't just saying, wow, thank you, Lord, Sabbath is over, and now I'm ready to go uh, shopping or whatever it is that we're going to do. Right? I was saying, Lord, I can't wait till the next Sabbath. I need to get ready for church for the next Sabbath. I need to get my mind ready. How am I going to prepare for the next Sabbath? I'm getting ready to be excited to be in church with my brothers and sisters of the faith. Right? And he says, so we have to do that. And he says, from doing our own pleasure. And he said, from, what, from not talking our own thing. And we tend to do that. I, 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 you know, I, I, as a pastor, it's, it's, it's hard uh, sometimes on the Sabbath day and there's others and I haven't had that here so don't get don't get don't get it wrong here but in other places other churches I've had I say you know well pastor uh, we're gonna go for a Sabbath walk do you want to go with us and there's nothing wrong with that amen there's nothing wrong with the good Sabbath walk there's nothing wrong with being out in nature but what what happens is that we get out there and we start walking and then we start talking about what we start talking about everything except Jesus Amen. We start. We start. We don't talk about Jesus. We don't talk about His second coming. We don't talk about what it's going to be like in the new heavens and the new earth. We don't talk about how we're going to invite other people to church. We're not going to talk about how to give Bible studies. 
We talk about what? Our own pleasures, our own wants, and our own desires. And so I'm saying is that do we really keep the Sabbath holy? And if we're not really keeping the Sabbath holy, if we're not doing God's pleasure, if we're not, uh, and we're just talking about our own delight, if we delight in our, and only in ourselves and not in Jesus, if we're not honoring the Sabbath, if we're not keeping it holy, if we're not uh, doing all of these other things that he asks us to do, then are we really keeping the Sabbath? Are we really keeping the commandments? And then, of course, and then, then that verse of Second Peter, I mean, of First John chapter 2 applies to us then, right? If we say that we love him and keep not his commandments, then we are, what, liars and the truth is not in us. I go, wow. Now, can we make it? Can we show that we love Jesus if we're lying? No. We have to be careful. I'm going to leave at this. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to pause here because then these are just some of the, I'll give you a little short list of don'ts, right? That's what the scripture is. But you have to find the list of do's. List of do's. What, well, how did Jesus keep the Sabbath then? We have to say, what did Jesus do on the Sabbath? Can anybody here tell me? Maybe a couple things. Maybe if we're too read in the scriptures. What did Jesus do on the Sabbath? Okay, heal the sick. Amen. He preached the gospel message. He was always speaking the truth. What, uh huh? What's that? He went to the synagogue. He stood up every Sabbath. It was his custom, right, to, to preach and to teach in the synagogues. And he preached outside the synagogue. And he brought healing. Uh, how many times? He prayed, right? There was a lot of times he had prayer to on the Sabbath. How many times did we read in the scripture where Jesus spent the whole day Sabbath just sleeping? Or he just stayed home. He said, you know, I'm holy. And we're going to read it, right? The scripture tells that Jesus was holy without sin. Amen? Amen. Jesus was holy without sin. Now, if he was holy without sin, he didn't sit at home and say, you know, they're going to come and look for me. They're coming to search me out because I'm, I'm holy and without sin. No. He was out. He was active. He was within the people. And so those of us are we, as, are we as holy as Jesus? No, we're not. So if Jesus being holy and without sin needed to, he had to go out and seek people and, and teach and to preach and to heal, should we not do this, be the same as Jesus? Should we not? You know, that's, that's how he kept the Father's commandments, didn't he? He says, I have to keep the Father's commandments. I love the Father. This is how I showed it. And if we want to show true love for Jesus, then we need to learn to do it the same way. I want to challenge us this morning to say, hey, Lord, I truly want to show that I love you. And I want to keep the commandments, all of them, not just the four, all of them, right? We need to keep all ten commandments just as you do. I want to, I want to show that love. And we say, we've got to say, though, but we have to be in prayer then, right? We have to say, Lord, give me then wisdom and the strength and the will to keep this day holy as you would have me to do it. Not my way, not my desires, not my will, because my will and my desires is what? It's to go home, relax, and talk about everything else except for Jesus and his saving grace. All right? We have to get out of that mold, right? We've got to get out of that mold and say, Lord, I want to live for you. I want to live for your glory and for your honor. That the sacrifice that you have made for me, Lord, right, would be counted worthy. Help me to live. Help me to show that I love you with all of my heart, all of my mind, and all of my strength. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. We'll do that. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you this wonderful and wonderful Sabbath morning and we thank you, Lord God, for this day. And Lord, we know that you have called us to part. Lord, that you said that you would have us to be a peculiar people, a royal priesthood unto you. Help us, Lord God, by your spirit, by your mercies, by your love, and by your grace 
Lord God, to be filled with your Holy Spirit that we might live 100% for you, that we can truly keep the Sabbath day holy. We ask you for these for this blessings, Lord God, that Jesus would be glorified in all that we do and in all that we are. Again, we thank you and we praise you in his holy name.